If you're watching this, you probably don't have a podcast. And if you don't have a podcast, you might be wondering, how do I start a podcast? Well, before you think about starting, think about the type. It's kind of like dating. You got to find the type that works for you. So today we're going to dive into the most successful podcast formats and also touching on one that I started years ago that I honestly wish I would have done a little bit differently. So let's get into this. The first format I'm going to touch on is called the prospect show. This is if you're selling something, whether it's a product or a service, what you're doing is you're educating and or entertaining people who will or would buy your product or service. So you're creating content for the 99% of your audience who hasn't bought anything yet. More on this in a couple minutes. This is called the prospect show and it's one of the best that you can do if you're selling something. The second podcast format is called The Authority Show, also called The Hijack. With The Authority Show, you're interviewing people who are authorities. I'm not talking police officers or FBI, CIA. I'm talking people who are leaders in their industry. So if you have a podcast about marketing, but you're just starting your journey, then you can interview top marketers have them on their, your podcast and showcase them that way to build a relationship with them. This also allows you to hijack some of their audience. If I am on your podcast and I post a clip from your podcast to my audience, now some of my audience is going to follow you. So this has multiple benefits, but it's a little bit more difficult to execute because of uh, how much time might be spent organizing and putting together these interviews. But the authority show is great if you want to connect with uh, high level people in basically any industry. The next podcast is live coaching. If you've ever seen Brad Lee, Andy Elliott, Tony Robbins, these are lifestyle and sales leaders. Um, what they will do is they'll actually record their in-person sessions. So if they're doing a session in front of 30 people, right? Maybe they're doing a live coaching, they'll actually actually record that and make that the podcast. This is great for public speakers. This is great for people who do coaching, whether one-on-one -on -one or in front of groups. So the live coaching aspect is much easier to record because you're just recording what you already do, but you don't get the ability to tailor it. So that podcast is kind of three things and you're also turning it into a podcast. So it's not going to have the specificity that the first two formats have, but it is a lot easier to record. And if you already have a built in audience, you might as well turn the camera on and throw it on YouTube at the very least. The next one we have is a modified version of the authority show. This is called the foot in the door format. What this allows you to do is again, build relationships with your guests. This is an interview based show. But instead of interviewing leaders in your industry, you're interviewing people who are your ideal prospects. This means if you have a service, say again, if you sell marketing, you will be interviewing people who potentially could buy or need your services, right? And after the podcast, after you've built rapport, after you have a, a conversation with them, you can ask them off camera, hey, this is what I do. Are you interested? Are you open to talking on a call to see if my services are a fit for you? People get mad at me that I even mention this style of podcasting because a lot of people in podcasting hate it. I hate it when it's not done in good spirits, right? And so if you're having me on your podcast and you just ask me, hey, I help people write books. I appreciate you being on the podcast. Have you ever considered a book, writing a book? Okay, I get that, right? But if you're having me on your podcast just to try to sell me something, that's when it puts a bad taste in people's mouth. So you gotta be careful with this one. Again, most people don't like me talking about it, but I'm gonna talk about it anyway because it works for a lot of people. And I've even been on podcasts like this and still had a good time. So don't forget this one. The last format is where many begin. And this is the quintessential, the OG passion project, personal mission podcast. 
this is the my friends told me I should start a podcast podcast and that's how I got into this I started this show five years ago in my garage and if I never did that I wouldn't be where I am today I had no business I had barely an audience at all and I just got on YouTube and started talking so I can't put down this podcast format though it's not going to be a results based format Meaning if you don't optimize for some kind of result, whether that's business views, downloads, you know, whatever that is, even just educating or growing your audience, if you don't optimize it for something, um, if you don't measure anything, then it's going to be difficult to tell if you're succeeding or not, especially once you get 20, 40, 50 episodes in. So don't neglect the passion project. Don't put the passion project down as if it's worse than a show that makes $100,000 a year. But the thing is, you're not going to get the same results as if you plan something with a coherent strategy. So if you just want to get started in podcasting, I totally understand. Get your equipment set up, click record. That's it. Now, this is just for my business and services folks out there. Once they're a podcast listener, they're now in your ecosystem. They trust you. They have what's called a parasocial relationship with you. They'll begin to think that they know you on a personal level because they're seeing you and now listening to you. You're technically in their ear while they're listening, right? And that's the ideal outcome here on a business or services level. You want this person to essentially walk all the way down your funnel to the point where they're listening to your podcast. And then from there, you can choose what you want to do. Do you want to ask them to book a call with you? That's what we do. Do you want to ask them to join an email newsletter? Do you want to ask them to sign up for a webinar? Do you want to ask them to buy your course? That's the playbook. This doesn't happen overnight. It's not like somebody magically appears as a podcast listener and poof, boom, now they love you. Now they want to buy all your stuff. It's not how it works. They see you gradually over the course of time as you're posting on social media or sending them an email newsletter or no matter which way they enter your ecosystem, right? And eventually they will click play on that podcast. Some of them will. And those folks will become listeners, a portion of them, and then that creates your what's called a funnel. Uh, if we're talking marketing terms, which is not the best term to use for it, but it's true, it is a funnel. So that's the ideal outcome from a business perspective. So what are the tricks to getting this right? What are the tricks to nailing the format and the formula when it comes to the podcast? Well, the first one is an easy one. It's find shows to emulate. You're not copying these podcasts, but say there's a podcast that you really love listening to, right? Maybe it's co-hosted. Maybe there's two different hosts. Maybe there's one host that you really resonate with, or maybe it's the chemistry between both of them that you really enjoy. Make a note of why you enjoy their chemistry so much. And if you're going to start a podcast, maybe you can have a co-host where you two have that similar chemistry. So never be afraid to use other shows as your inspiration for your show. Next, keep the listener in mind no matter what. You want to be the ambassador for the audience. You want to be asking the questions that the person at home who can't ask the questions wants you to ask. That means being ambassador for the audience. So when in doubt, keep the listener in mind and create and ask questions from the listener perspective. And finally, if you want a way to do this that takes a little bit more time, a little bit more effort, but will give you the best experience before you launch your podcast, it's working on a podcast. Find a few people who run podcasts and ask them if you can just hang around and watch. You will just learn by association, by seeing what these people do, how they prepare, how their lighting is set up, their camera, their mics. No matter what it might be, you're going to learn through osmosis. So that's why number three is find somebody else who does the thing you want to do, ask them questions and learn from them. Now, since you've gotten this far in this video, I have to tell you this. None of this really matters if you don't apply it, if you don't launch a podcast. So what I would suggest you do is at least try some of these formats we mentioned today. Is it a passion project? Is it a sales show? Who knows what it is? But try them out 
and see if you like them. You don't know until you actually do it. And if you do need help, we have a program to do that. It's five steps, very simple. The link to speak to me personally for us to talk through your podcast idea for free for 30 minutes is in the description or show notes, whether you're watching the video version on YouTube or the audio. We don't have sponsors on this these videos because this is what we do. We help people launch and create podcast. So if you need help or you just want to talk through an idea, we do have that link below to book a call with me. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode. I really appreciate it. We're on every single platform, even the ones nobody uses. So we'll catch you next week for the next one.